today we're going to be making a 3D Chrome logo in Blender. Let's start off by opening up Blender and importing our SVG file. Make sure you check to see if your file is actually an SVG. The way to export that is to go into Adobe Illustrator, and when you do, make sure you hit Save As and click SVG. That way it can be a scalable vector graphic and we can play around with it in Blender. We're gonna go ahead and hit Import SVG. I'm gonna go to Top View. I'm gonna select everything and then select S on my keyboard and then drag to the right and begin to uh, blow it up. Once I get to the size I like, I'm gonna select all the different objects and hit Command J to merge them all into one file. I'm gonna hit set origin to mass. I'm gonna change the location to zero, the X and the Y, and turn the rotation X to 90. As you can see, it's now upright and we can go around and look at it. And as you can see, it's pretty flat. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna extrude it. I'm gonna go to geometry and go over to the extrude tab. I'm gonna go ahead and just drag to the right till I get it to a size that I like. I kinda want this one to be thicker, so I'm going to keep going till I get it to a size that I like. That looks pretty good. Next, I'm gonna convert it to a mesh. When I hit tab, I'm gonna see that it has a lot of these lines that we don't really want. What I'm gonna do next is I'm going to go over to the modifiers tab, hit add modifier, and we're going to look for the remesh modifier. I'm gonna go to smooth. We're gonna hit remove disconnected, just to make sure everything looks good. I'm gonna turn up the off tree depth. Here's the thing, I'm gonna put it at 10, but make sure you don't go too high, because if you do, it's gonna mess up and your computer's probably gonna crash, especially if you're on an old computer. I'm gonna hit the drop down and hit apply. As you can see, it looks a lot better when we zoom in. I'm gonna um, mess with it a little bit. I'm going to add a decimate modifier and this is just going to uh, help it look a little bit more realistic. I'm going to turn it just to one. We're at our first save checkpoint. So if you want to save, go ahead and save now. As you can see, it added some imperfections to it so it looks a lot better. Next, I'm going to just change the color of our mesh just to make it a little bit easier to see. I'm going to turn it to a light gray. Next, I'm going to switch to sculpt mode because we're going to make this a little bit smoother. As you can see, it's pretty jagged. I'm going to turn up the radius, turn down the strength a little bit, and then I'm just going to rub my cursor over it just to get it to smooth out. I'm going to turn that strength up just a little bit more. And I'm just going to gently go across the front and the back. As you can see, it starts to smooth out a little bit and it looks a little bit more natural, especially for what we're about to do to it next. After we're done, I'm going to hit shade smooth back into object mode. And now we have our logo, it's 3D. I kept these ridges in it just to kind of look at, make it look a little bit like a coin. But next what we want to do is we want to add some details to it. So I'm going to open up a brand new window and I'm going to go into the shader editor. Hit N to remove that and we're going to get rid of this material because we're going to make our own. Hit new. I boosted the, met the metallic. So I'm going to go over to the um, different viewport just so we can see what it looks like. As you can see, it's really shiny, turned on the roughness, and it looks like metal. And we've, if you want to stop here, we've got the effect. But what I want to do is I want to make it look a little bit more realistic. So I'm going to Shift A and add a noise texture. I'm also going to Shift A and add a color ramp. I'm going to connect the color to the factor and then the color from the color ramp into the roughness. As you can see, our mesh lost all of its color, but we're about to mess with that a little bit. I'm going to boost the black and kind of play around with the white. And what this does is basically white is 100 and black is zero. So what we're doing is we're playing with the levels of the roughness that we're adding. So the more I boost the zero, which is black, the, the less of the effect we can see. And the more of the white that I boost, the more of it we can see. So we're just going to play around with it until we get to a place that we like. Next, we're just going to mess with our background a little bit. I'm going to go over to the world view. I'm going to 
switch over to the rendered output. I'm gonna go over to the background. I'm gonna hit Shift A and add an environment texture. From there, I'm gonna hit open and find the background that I want. In this case, it's gonna be this cool scene that I found. And as you can see, it changed the background. And now we have a full world for it to work in. Uh, I'm gonna hit Control T to add our mapping nodes and our texture coordinate. To enable that, make sure you just go over to your settings and make sure that uh, Node Wrangler is enabled. I'm just gonna play around with these X, Y, and Z coordinates until I get it to a place that I like. And if you don't want that background, as you can see, it's a little ugly, just go over to your render engine, go down to film, hit transparent, and now it's gone. So this is looking nice. I'm gonna go over to camera, and I'm going to hit in, go over to view, and lock camera to view. And I'm just gonna move the camera around again to a place that I like. And there we go, we have our 3D logo. Quickly, I just wanna animate this so that we can put in videos or whatever you want to do with it. We're going to go over to the animation tab. You can see that we have all these different settings. So we're going to go to the first frame and we're going to go down to the Z rotation, hit a keyframe, and then we're going to go all the way to the end, which is 250 in this case. You can change these settings, but these are just the default. We're going to type in 360 for a 360 degrees turn. And now when we hit play, it's going to turn around in a full circle. If you want it to uh, just be a linear full circle without any stops or uh, starts, you can just go to key interpolation mode and hit linear. I'm going to go ahead and hit render animation and we're done. And there you go, you just made a 3D Chrome logo in Blender. Awesome, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you got something out of this and I will see you in the next one.